Good evening, Dr. McGee. I'm Abby Berger, and I'll be reading The Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg. The Polar Express. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear, the ringing of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sound of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. There's the train. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took out a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where? I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. Now, outstretched, can everybody say outstretched? Outstretched means that you're reaching out and you're stretching out your arm. So you can say, I took my mom's outstretched hand as we went into the grocery store. Can everybody say outstretched one more time? Good job. There's the Polar Express. All that snow coming down and everything. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. There's a Polar Express racing through the woods. Soon there were no lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. Now there are the lean wolves there. Can everybody say lean? Lean means very thin or skinny. So somebody could say, my sister is very lean. She just means she's very skinny. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. Now, how many of you have been on a roller coaster? Yep. And you can see, there's the Polar Express, the train, just flying up those mountains. Again. The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. Now the word barren. Can everybody say barren? 
Now barren is just a big open space of just nothing. That's why it says there's it says there's a barren desert of ice. So instead of desert being hot and dry and sandy, it was just nothing but ice. That's all they could see. So you could say there was barren desert. Just nothing but just sand and hot. So this was just ice and cold. Everybody say barren one more time. Good job. And also you can see there's just all ice down there, nothing else. No trees or anything. Okay. And they're making their way to their destination. The North Pole. It was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories everywhere. Christmas toy was made. At first we saw no elves. They're gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift? We all asked. The, condu the conductor answered. He will choose one of you. There it is racing through the city. North Pole. Look! Shouted one of the children. The elves! Outside we saw hundreds of elves. As our train grew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no farther, we stopped, and the conductor led us outside. It's all the elves, all those little heads, those are all the elves. Can help Santa out. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I've ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointing me said, let's have this fellow right here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, No, what would you like for Christmas? How many of you would like this to happen? Yes, me too. And then there's Santa right there. And all the elves are helping. And then there's a bunch more back there too. <laughs> I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, <clears throat> Santa smiled and he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood, holding the bell high above him and called out, This is the first gift of Christmas! There's the bell right there in Santa's hand, and the little boy. It'd be so exciting. <clears throat> A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me, and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked a whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us and disappeared in the cold, dark polar sky. Now when it says Santa cracked his whip, that doesn't mean it broke. That means he made the whip go just like that. That's what they call crack, that part of the whip. And you can see that he's doing that right there. Oh. 
As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, said the, one of the children. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood by my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside there was a silver bell. There was a no. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I have ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father. It's broken. When I shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. So it's saying that the bell's magical, and the only people that can hear the bell are the ones that truly believe in the magic of Christmas. The bell. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as the years passed on, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I have grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all who truly believe. The end. Now, what was the Polar Express? Right, the Polar Express was a train. It wasn't an airplane or anything. It was a train that they traveled on. There's a whole picture of it. A magical train that took them to the North Pole. Very good. Now, who knows how did the bell fall out of the little boy's pocket? Right. He had a hole in the bathroom of his pocket so when he put it in, it fell right out. Very good. Now, who remembers who gave the little boy this bell? Right, Santa Claus. And do you remember who returned it to him? It said, signed, Mr. C. Very good, Mr. Claus, Santa Claus. So that's who gave it to him. Very good. Now, how many of you would like this to happen to you? Wouldn't that be awesome? No. Well, that is the end of what I have read. I really loved doing that, to be honest with you. And I hope you enjoyed it, too.